This is day one of our two-day ride up to Churchill. We're going to start here in Thompson, and then we're going to ride 550 kilometers, more than half of that off-trail, all the way up to Churchill. Basically, we're looking at 24 hours of ride time in the next 48 hours. Now, this is definitely one adventure I'm looking forward to. We aren't traveling alone either, we're part of a larger group of riders, and we're all in this adventure together. In total, there'll be eight customers on the trip with four guides to make sure we don't get into any trouble and to keep us going in the right direction. The timing of this trip is early March, with ride days on the 7th, 8th and 9th of March, then on the 10th overnight into the 11th, we're taking the train back from Churchill to our starting point in Thompson. Add in travel days to and from, and in total, this is going to be an intense seven day trip. Meeting the other riders of the group at our starting point at the lodge just outside of Thompson, I can say for sure that we're all excited for this once in a lifetime experience and this morning, spirits are high. Once we get all of our sleds loaded up with our gear, this expedition will be ready to begin our quest for the bay. But before we start holding on to handlebars, I'm gonna take you through a conversation I had with our intrepid host for this adventure, Al McLaughlin of Heartland International Travel and Tours, to get a better understanding of exactly what we're getting ourselves into. So Al, talk to me a little bit about the quest for the bay. Give me some history on this, uh, this event. So we were looking for a way to introduce uh, snowmobiling in Northern Manitoba to the rest of the world. We have great snow up here. Um, we have snow early and the snow stays late. Uh, we have wonderful um, snowmobile clubs that do great work on, on the trails, on the groom trails. And we were really looking at something um, that would get people to come to Northern Manitoba. So when you add snowmobiles, we thought about where can we go from, from our cities in, in Northern Manitoba, for, from Thompson, and we thought about going to Churchill. Uh, Churchill's everyone's bucket list and just the adventure of, of going from, from Thompson to, to Churchill is, is great. It's a great adventure. You're going to see lots of things uh, on the tour. So walk me through what's going to happen over the next two-day adventure uh, going up to Churchill. So we're going to leave Saskia Rapids Lodge, which is just south of Thompson, mm -hmm. and then we're going to go on uh, the snowman trail that, that's uh, groomed by the uh, Thompson Club and uh, we're gonna head north. We'll stop in Thompson to get a little bit of fuel just to top us up. And then uh, we'll head right up to Gillum. Um, you're gonna see a couple uh, generating stations. So you'll see the, the four bay on, on one side and then it'll be a big drop where the, uh, the water will go through the generating stations. And then we're gonna get into Gillum, mm -hmm. uh, which is a nice little community. That's uh, again, um, a long day. We're gonna do <laughs> It'll be about 300 kilometers, so yeah, right from start to finish. Hours. In about 10 hours, yeah. you know, you'll be doing 300 kilometers. Uh, with, with breaks in between, we'll take mm -hmm. reasonable breaks. And then uh, we'll overnight in, in Gillum and get rested up for, for the next leg of the journey. Yeah, and, and, and day two is, is the big day. I mean, it's a longer distance, but this is also uh, off trail from Thompson to, to Gillum is trail riding and that type of adventure. But day two is, is when the, it gets a little spicier. Yeah, that, that's, that's the big day. Now, uh, we will drag um, the, the trail, so it'll, mm -hmm. be, it'll be dragged. It has been used before, as you say, by um, local trappers and fishers and, and local people who travel through, but it is isolated. Like there's, yeah. there's not a Starbucks in every corner. <laughs> so, you know, no. it is bush trail. It's an adventure. It is an adventure. And I mean, you're gonna go up on the tundra and the snow gets blown off the, the tundra. So you're gonna have very little snow up there. You'll be bouncing over, you know, a few mm -hmm. small rocks and, and frozen muskeg. Um, but you're going to then come down onto, onto rivers and you're going to have fresh powder mm -hmm. and you're going to see absolutely marvelous snow banks that the wind has blown over top the, the edge of the, uh, uh, of the river. So it'll, it'll just, it'll be a wonderful experience. And of course I have to ask questions about polar bears because Churchill is known for its polar bear population up here. Are we going to be seeing bears? We <laughs> will probably not be seeing bears. We're going to go close to the denning areas. So um, the mums right now are, are in the dens and they've given birth to their, their young ones. Um, they'll be coming out of the dens very shortly. Um, I hope that we don't see one because you don't want to 
You want to see one afar, it was you don't just, want to see one close. I was just going to say, especially on a snowmobile, you're not so protected. So I'm okay with not seeing any bears you, while riding a snowmobile. That's right. But yeah, you don't want to get in between a mom and a cub. She's, no. she's not a happy girl. No, I wouldn't, very uh, wouldn't imagine. Yeah, very protective. So uh, again, I'm looking forward to this trip. Uh, it's going to be an amazing couple of days. Then we have another adventure on top of that because we're going to be loading our sleds on a train to get them back down. So even though uh, you know we've accomplished 24 hours of ride time in 48 hours and yeah. then a couple of days that are a little bit more relaxed in Churchill, um, we have to get the sleds back down, especially for customers who are bringing their own sleds on this adventure, which is one of the things you can do. Yeah. Uh, so that sounds like an interesting, uh, an interesting overnight train trip as well. There'll be a whole bunch of little things that you'll be able to tick off your bucket <laughs> yeah. list, you know, ride a train, uh, see the tundra, see the Churchill, go on a, a snowmobile adventure. You'll be able to check off a whole bunch of them by the end of this trip. After speaking with Al to get a better understanding of what lays ahead, I'm still a little nervous, but also more excited than ever about the upcoming adventure. Now, I'm sort of disappointed that there's probably not gonna be any polar bears on this adventure, but I'm sort of okay with that fact as well, because after all, we're gonna be out there with just snowmobiles as protection. But my plan is, if we do see a bear, that I'm gonna smash Mark the camera guy in the knee so he can be food and I can get away. Because after all, when you see a polar bear and you're under attack, you don't have to be faster than the bear, you just have to be faster than somebody. So this, uh, this little talk, I kind of want to talk about the sled that I'm on, which is a 900 Ace non-turbo expedition by Skidoo, and it's uh, black and white. And you know, normally on a trip, I'd be a little disappointed having an expedition to ride for 500 some odd kilometers. But I think up here with uh, the conditions that we're in, man, this is the best sled. Life is good in the Canadian North on a Skidoo expedition while you're on expedition. The big thing is, as long as it's faster than a polar bear, I don't really care. So the journey that we're on is from Thompson, Manitoba, all the way up to Churchill. And after talking with Al and learning a little bit more about the adventure that we're on, I mean, I think this is the type of adventure, if you've got reasonable snowmobiling skills, um, you can make it as far as the terrain goes. But this has got a remote feel to it up here. I mean, it's, uh, you're out in the middle of nowhere. Not so much right now, but as time wears on and we're in the tundra, essentially, you know, it's, uh, and, and the terrain changes. I mean, right now we've got, we've got nice trees, we've got excellent groomed trails, um, we've got lakes and swamp areas. I think here we're coming to a, a swampy area. Muskeg maybe is in there, but uh, you know, you've got a, a varying terrain, which is very similar to what you'd see in Ontario or Quebec. I mean, it feels a lot the same as that, but apparently as we go farther north, it's going to turn more tundra-like. And uh, from what I gather, it's gonna feel a lot like Labrador, where the trees, instead of being as tight together as that is, are going to you know get a lot smaller uh, a lot more distance between them a lot more uh, more sparse i guess you could say and i'm looking forward to that part of the trip but i think doing this trip you also end up with this immense sense of accomplishment I'm, that's what i feel i'm going to be looking for is that sense of accomplishment when we pull into into uh, churchill tomorrow night um, and i think you know that is going to make this trip for me feel like uh, again a bucket list trip i was super excited hearing about this trip when i first heard that this was on the menu for the season 
when I'm 80 years old, I can be like, yeah, when I was a young whippersnapper, I rode all the way up from Thompson, Manitoba to Churchill, and death was on my shoulder the whole way. You know, I'm gonna be, it's gonna be one of those stories for me. Now, again, I'm super stoked to be on this trip. Um, so far, it's just been trail rides, but we got a really good group of riders with us. They're excited about this trip too, and I'm looking forward to a whole lot more kilometers up ahead of us. So stay tuned. We got a lot more to come on this ride. It's gonna be epic. So it's gonna be a long day today. We figure uh, 12 hours, 12 hours running at least, and uh, but should be a good time. Weather um, is gonna be about 18 throughout the day with winds gusting around 35 and, and gusting up to 54 from the north. So this shouldn't bother us too much. All right, let's have some fun. So as soon as you're finished eating, if you wanna grab your stuff, bring it out to the, uh, out to the uh, sleigh. All right, good job. It's day two on our quest for the bay. Now last night here in Gillum was a fantastic evening hanging out with this group. It's amazing how the common thread of snowmobiling can make new acquaintances feel like old friends. Today though is a brand new day and it's about to get spicy because from here to Churchill is about 300 kilometers and it's all off trail. It was fairly quiet though. I think as a group we were all pretty tired and everyone wanted to be rested up for today's leg of the adventure which is going to be even longer than yesterday's. Plus, today's ride will take us through even more extreme territory, all off-road following hydro lines along with rail and riverbeds. In addition to the ride, Gillum proved to be another interesting experience. Accommodations were way better than expected, especially since I originally thought we'd be sleeping in a trapper cabin. The Kettle River Inn is absolutely luxurious compared to a straw bed, with mice keeping your feet warm, which I thought I was going to be in for. And by the way, I have experienced that in the past. Overall, Gillum does have the feeling of an outpost town with the hydro plant being the center of attention. Now, I'm not sure when I'll be back, if ever, but it's amazing the out of the way places snowmobile adventures will take you to. But now, it's time for us to point our skis towards Churchill. Adventure doesn't begin to describe the feeling of a ride like this, especially when you're right in the middle of it. Leaving civilization behind this morning in Gillum, knowing that there isn't much between you and your destination other than a railside camp as a quick warming stop along the way, makes this trip a very serious one and can lead to trouble if you let it. Thankfully, with guides like Al, Claude and Remy, we all felt pretty safe knowing that they had our backs. Now, Claude and Remy even rode down from Churchill to Gillum the day before to make sure the trail was open and marked out. Plus, they're the ones carrying all of our fuel with them on their sleighs. Tough and hardy are just a couple of the adjectives I'd use to describe our guides, but also everyone we've met along the way so far. There is definitely a real spirit of adventure to be found in the people here, which I think must go deep in the folks who choose to make northern Manitoba their home. As our ride continued on the way to Churchill, I never felt isolated or in danger at any time, but I did find myself thinking that things could get bad in a hurry and I'd better pay attention to what I was doing and how I was riding. One goofy mistake that would never be a problem back at home could be a nightmare here, so our pace was appropriate. And even though there are a few opportunities for speed, this trip isn't about that. Slow and steady wins this race. Good ride. Oh, yeah. Beautiful trail and everybody seems to be enjoying themselves. And can't ask for a better day. Minus 18 with a bit of a wind, but you can't beat that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's crazy up here. It's totally different than anywhere else. Yeah. It is pretty incredible. It's a great day. And you know what? The sun's coming through. The light's pretty good. You can just feel the heat come on to you, eh, oh, when the sun came. Yeah, it's getting nice. Came out there, yeah. It's still chilly, but it's getting nice. Mm -hmm. 
But I've been on groomed trails back at home that aren't as good as that. Like, <laughs> it's good. Okay, so we're a little over halfway to Churchill right now. We're at a little place called McClintock, which isn't a town, I think it's that place. Anyhow, it's warm inside, which is gonna be a great break because I can tell you over the last hour or so, it's gotten a lot windier and it's gotten a lot colder. And I think the whole group is ready for a break. Plus I think they got hot coffee and sandwiches in there. So I'm about ready to get off the sleds, get inside, get warm because it's getting windy and cold. Today, a much different feeling out here on the trails. Way, way more remote. Spent a bunch of time getting here, practically all on, I think actually all on hydro line. So, uh, you know, over 200 kilometers on a hydro line. We're about 200 kilometers on a hydro line. 170, I think, to get here. And it was, uh, I mean, it was exceptional. The, the boys, when they came down, uh, Remy and Claude, they drug a drag with them, a small little groomer to help uh, set up some snow so it was a little smoother but also a little bit more uh, packed so we didn't have to deal with cutting trail the whole way. But uh, from this point forward, for I think practically all the way into Churchill, we're down on this river. And they're talking about something like a 170 turns to get, uh, to, get to where we're going, so that's going to be amazing. But I have to say today, I mean yesterday, again it was pretty chill, easy day, relatively. Still had that uh, that north uh, feel to it, that remote feel to it, but nothing like today. Today's feel is next level. If you want to go up and rest and have some fun, have some fun, eh? Yeah, we'll kind of keep, uh, we'll see what happens. Just whatever you do, don't pass the orange building. I, I heard that, don't pass the orange building. <laughs> do whatever you want, just don't pass the orange building. Famous last words. I don't know what's on the other side of the orange building. Maybe, I don't know, the, the end of the earth is right there or something. It feels like it's the end of the earth. <laughs> if you're looking for a tour that's just not the same old, same old tour, this could be it. And like I said, I, this is one of those, those trips where you get, to, uh, you get to experience something super unique, very Canadian, and going to a place that's pretty spectacular that a lot of people you know, know about and, want to travel to and we're going there on snowmobiles I mean how great is that The other piece of advice for a snowmobile adventure up here is dress warm. By the end of the day, when the sun was down, the cold was definitely starting to bite deep. And I was thankful for the first sightings of Churchill coming into view, knowing that warmth wasn't far away. Now, this was spring too, balmy weather for the region. I had on every layer of warm gear I had, and I wish I had more. Now, I wasn't worried about frostbite or anything like that. I was just feeling the cold a little bit more than I wanted to. I couldn't imagine the depth of cold here in the middle of winter. Hats off to the folks who work and play outside up here in the cold. We're here, we're in Churchill, we're at the Tundra Inn. It's pizza time and maybe a Tylenol and an adult beverage. <laughs> wow, we're here. 12 hours and 18 minutes. 
all off trail, 300 and some odd kilometers. Good day. Good day. Now let's get inside because it's still freaking winter here in a big way. It's cold. Now, if you're the type of person who likes to pay attention to details, you may have noticed that the machine I've been riding has changed from an Expedition to an Enduro, and let me tell you why. You see, on the first part of the trip, where we rode from Thompson up to Gillum, I noticed a small vibration coming out of the Expedition. Now, it wasn't bad, and I was fairly comfortable with continuing on, but on a trip like this, you really don't want to take any chances. So Al called down to Steve at Nickel City Motors, and Steve drove up with his own personal snowmobile, his Enduro, for me to ride on the rest of the trip. Because you see, when you're doing an adventure like this one, you definitely don't want to take any chances with your equipment, and even the gear you're wearing. It has has to be in top-notch shape. Being here now, it feels like I'm on the set of some documentary television series. It's a pretty surreal feeling. Now, I think Churchill is a type of place that most people have heard of or seen on TV, usually paired up with polar bears. Now, we're probably not gonna see any bears on this trip because they're a little farther out of town, but I think that's a good thing because we're gonna be out on the ice of Hudson Bay just with snowmobiles without the protection of one of these bad boys. But it doesn't matter, even though we're not gonna see any bears or probably not gonna see any bears, there's still plenty of things to see and do here in Churchill. First up for the day's activities was a trip across the ice of the frozen Churchill River to the Prince of Wales Fort, which is a national historic site of Canada. In this place, you are literally stepping back in time to the days of the fur trade, Hudson's Bay Company, and the British. Turns out this remote outpost on the edge of the Churchill River in Hudson's Bay was a brutal and unforgiving place for the unfortunate souls who found themselves garrisoned here. Frostbite, scurvy, polar bears, black flies in the summer, the French, isolation, were all things faced by the troops here back in the 18th century. Eventually, the British just gave up and abandoned the fort, but to be standing in its ruins today, with the cold and wind biting at us in our modern gear, I couldn't help but feel sorry for the people who had no other choice but to endure their existence here. Many of them didn't, but they left behind a place that is truly amazing. Also, while touring the fort, we had two Parks Canada guides with us. One talking about the fort and the history here and the other on guard. Remember those pesky polar bears? Well, the fort is right in their territory and no one here at the fort or in the town of Churchill takes this threat lightly. The bears and respect for their power really do define Churchill and the people who live here. After the fort, we had the chance to explore the ice on foot. Now I'm sure this gave our guides cause for concern because even though the polar bears weren't supposed to be in the area, that doesn't mean there couldn't be one stocking the ice for a meal of seal or a tasty snowmobiler. But getting to walk through the giant ice ridges out to the edge of the water was the most memorable experience of this whole trip. And the photo we took here is the first one I show people when I talk about this adventure. And yes, we are jumping on the ice at the edge of the sea. Now we were pretty sure it was gonna hold. Getting the chance to spend some time in this place, even though we didn't do a whole lot of riding today, was a real treat. After our two-day adventure getting here, Churchill turned out to be the real cherry on top of a very delicious Sunday. I ended part one of the quest for the Bay Adventure on the last episode of STV talking about the sense of accomplishment that we all felt when we arrived here in Churchill on the shores of Hudson Bay. Now even if this trip was to end right now, it would still rank as one of my all-time favorite best adventures ever, but our trip here isn't over yet. Waking up to a cool, crispy day four on this adventure, the long days have been catching up, so it's nice to know we have an easy day around town before we board the train. Up first, more exploration around this unique community. 
being here, experiencing this place, and the folks who call Churchill home, you'll find a real sense of community. Everyone here seems to know each other, and although there's a real spirit of individual self-reliance, you can tell this is a community where people work together to survive. And speaking of rugged individuals, we also had the chance to talk with Claude about one of the key tools they use to move gear and supplies around the tundra as snowmobilers and outdoorsmen, the Kamatik. So we're here in Churchill, and one of the big reasons for us actually being able to make this adventure is this sleigh right here. And I want to introduce you to the man who built this sleigh and knows everything there is about the Kamatik. Am I right, Claude? Kamatik. Kamatik. This, this is Claude Daudet, who is one of our intrepid guides that, uh, that led us on the expedition from uh, all the way up here to Churchill. And I've been absolutely amazed watching these things go down the trail, how much load you guys are carrying, and how well they work behind a snowmobile. But these are designed off a traditional Inuit sled, these right? These are basic tr traditional ideas, and we kind of, uh, with the snowmobile world, we kind of created our own Kamatex. Yeah. So uh, back in uh, thousands years ago, they are used for dog sleds. And back in that time, they used to use uh, uh, probably a hide from a, a seal or something, a whale, and it would lash all the all the, the runners together. Yeah, and yeah. the lashing is really the key for these things, right? Like there, there's no screws holding these things or nails holding these together. It's all about it's all lashing. Rope. Yeah. And uh, there's two different types of tying. Some tie individual and others tie, uh, like this one here, uh, four runners uh, uh, rope and then another four runners, another four runners. So and, it's all in the knots. And what's, what's the reason for that, that you're lashing them? Well, the idea is we want it to rock and roll. So because the land is so rough and uh, has, uh, is so unforgiving, uh, that's why they do it that way. Now, one of the interesting things, you've got uh, like an A-frame style hitch, which is rigid to the sled, so you can, you can slow it down. It's not going to get completely out of control behind you and come barreling in to rear end the snowmobile. But the hitch is set back from the very front of the runner a little bit. Why do you do that? Well, um, the way I got it set up here is... Uh, it's kind of a floating hitch, I call it. Yeah. And it kind of sits there and it, it bounces back and forth. So when it when I'm hitting bumps, it's floating along. And the length of the hitch, I have it six feet long. Mm -hmm. And a little bit longer is better because it does the same thing. So it's, everything's kind of yeah. floating along. Again, watching it go down the trail behind you, I mean, it was amazing how smooth it actually was despite the trail being fairly rough. And maybe that's because it's so long, it's spanning a lot of those bumps. Exactly. It doesn't go into stuff. Yeah. It just goes right over top. Exactly. So a lot of guys have shorter hitches. Uh, some guys put their hitches on the outside and the hitches here. Yeah. And by the end of the day, your back's in three pieces. <laughs> so with the longer hitch, uh, yes, it's you know a little bit uh, over the top, but I mean, it does the job when you're pulling big loads. Again, it's amazing how you know, this, this simple old technology of, of lashing everything together to keep it mobile and, and flexible and, and watching these things go down the trail. I, I've seen them before in other areas. I've seen them in, in Labrador before and I thought they were cool then. And this trip has totally reinforced that. I mean, to watch you guys set the pace you did, you guys were hauling everything. And it was amazing to watch them go down the trail. Yeah, and I, mean, I was going up to 60 kilometers an hour. Yeah, that's... For many miles. Yeah, oh, it worked out so good. Amazing, again. I'd love to build one of these things. I might have to take some measurements and, uh, and make a plan for myself so I can build one when I get home. Kamatik building is a big art for, even for the North, more for the Northern communities, so how you build them, like it's really yeah. a, a big showpiece for, for everybody. Uh, us as well, the, uh, the more time you put in it, the better Kamatik you get. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for telling me about the Kamatik. Kamatik, yes. The Kamatik. My pleasure. Churchill reminds me of places like Dawson City, Yukon, or Happy Valley Goose Bay in Labrador, other isolated communities, but all so welcoming to travelers visiting their little corner of the planet. Coming here on the snowmobiling adventure of a lifetime, it was nice to relax a little bit while in town, taking in sights like the Insanitak Museum and its fascinating artifacts from a different time and culture, to seeing the tundra buggies and the new state-of-the-art electric versions. We also spotted the northern lights in the evenings, which was awesome, even if they weren't at their absolute brightest. And then we got to spend time with great people, both local to Churchill and other members of our little expedition. Yeah, what I really hope people will 
will get from doing this trip is, uh, is just the sheer beauty of, of the north. Um, like there's, uh, there's some rivers, there's some ravines, there's some valleys, there's, uh, there's it, it's some, in my opinion, it's some of my favorite riding I've ever done. Um, and, and you get a mix of it. You get right thick forest to wide open barren lands um, with no snow. And you know, you're, sometimes you're riding on the tops of, uh, of the tundra, soil, um, things like that, right? So it, you get one end of the other, um, you know, and you get the switchbacks, you get the turns, you get all that, the hills, and then you also get just the barren wasteland. Um, I think you put it best, one of you guys were saying that uh, you went up to the top of the bank and what's it look like up there? And one of you guys replied, it looks like the moon, <laughs> right? So it's, uh, that in itself is a beautiful thing to look at, right? So coming from, you know, the, the amount of kilometers that you travel, you see a lot of uh, diversity in the landscape. Um, and then, like I said, getting right out to the Hudson Bay, which is Arctic waters. It's, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, the, the summer months, and if you're mid-August, you might get all three, and a lot of people do. You'll get the whales, you'll get the bears, and you'll get the northern lights. One of the highlights to Churchill is, is kayaking or paddle boarding with, with beluga whales. It's just phenomenal to see a, a wild animal the size of a beluga whale that wants to interact with you, wants to see you, is excited to swim alongside your kayak or your paddleboard. It's just, it's bar none. I've been all over the world. It's bar none, one of the best things I've ever done. And that's why I think I keep doing it every single year. As our last day in town came to an end, I was a little sad that this part of the adventure was coming to a close, but our quest for the Bay experience wasn't over yet. Other than by air or snowmobile as we've proven with this adventure, rail is really the only other way in and out of Churchill. This train is the lifeline to the outside world and our one-way ticket back to reality. Now this is definitely not a bullet train. This ride will eventually get us back to Thompson, but will rattle and slowly make its way along the tracks, making stops along the way to drop off or pick up people and supplies as needed. Settling in after our evening departure, we all got comfortable for the overnight trip, but the time given to us on the train also let us think back to the experiences of the last few days. So Al, talk to me a little bit about uh, the success of this trip. Are you happy with, uh, with how everything went down? Yeah, I'm very happy. Um, I think we've hit all the objectives that, that we wanted to. We had a great ride coming up the, uh, um, the Deer River, the second part of the trip um, from Gillum to, uh, to Churchill was excellent. Um, it hit everything that I wanted it to hit. But I mean, the adventure even continues today. I mean, we're on a train uh, going, and it's a long overnight train ride from Churchill down to Thompson. Um, was the train always sort of figuring into this whole package uh, to get people and sleds back down to Churchill? Yeah, yeah. There's only two ways to get out of Churchill, um, and that's by plane or by train. And uh, a lot of people haven't been on a train for a long time, you know, so this is another experience. So Via Rail has the, uh, has the train um, coming down from Churchill. It's 12 hours to Thompson. Um, our sleds will be coming down on, on the uh, freight train. But uh, so we got, we got to do a, a nice little overnight trip on, on the train. And it's nothing better than falling asleep with a click, clack, click, clack, click, clack of the, of the track. So it, it was good. It was, so, you know, when you take a look at the guests and they, they had ex expectations, I think we've met all those expectations. I had expectations. I think I, we've met all the expectations that I wanted to see, and we can knock those things off our bucket list. They all got a little plaque to, saying that they've uh, participated in the, in, the, uh, in the tour. So, I mean, that, everything was great. Talking to the guests, um, talking to the guides, everybody seemed to be really happy with, with the tour. Um, 
you know, right from, from uh, the sledding experience, uh, getting onto the powder on, on the Deer River and some of the other rivers. Um, so the whole sledding experience was important, right down to the food. I mean, the food at the hotels and the restaurants um, and the accommodations were great as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so we were, we were treated pretty well uh, by all our partners uh, on the tour. And, and I haven't heard any complaints from the guests uh, whatsoever. So I think it's been a very successful tour. Yeah, I, I've seen lots of smiles and yeah. I think lots of people are making uh, memories that they're going to keep with them for a very long time. Now moving forward, if uh, somebody is, is watching this program and is interested in doing this tour uh, the following year in 2023, what are some of the steps that somebody would do in order to be able to, to become part of the next generation of tours next year? Yeah, if you wanted to do this trip uh, in the future, then go on the Heartland um, Travel and Tours website. Um, do your research on, on the trip and then also take a look at yourself and your, your machinery. Um, get prepared. You can't just jump on the machine on the day of the tour. You've got to make sure that you're confident with your machine and, and your yourself that you're, you're going to be able, able to take this because we had great weather this trip. Um, but you also saw that we ran into a little bit of a storm at the end of it. So, I mean, that's, you know, that that could have happened in Gillum and we could have been traveling for 10 hours through through a storm. So you want to make sure that you're prepared for, for every eventuality. Mm -hmm. And if somebody's going to, uh, has that spirit of adventure, um, that has that confidence in themselves and their sleds and their, their gear, you know, is this the type of tour that somebody is, is going to look back at for a long time and reminisce and remember? Yes, yeah, definitely. People are going to look back and, and say, I did that. I did that tour. And they've also met some great friends because the group really knits together because you're depending on everybody to, to work together um, to, to make this trip a success. So, yeah, you're going to have some real lifelong friendships by the time you come out. Well, we've made it back down to Thompson after an incredible five-day adventure that was truly once in a lifetime. At the end of the day, all I can say is I already want to go back. There is so much left to experience, like seeing the bears off a tundra buggy or the belugas swimming in the Churchill River. Plus, there's still more to discover around the town of Churchill. We simply just didn't have the time to do everything. Maybe next time, though, I don't ride into town on a snowmobile, and that will be okay. Because any form of transportation you choose to explore in northern Manitoba, I promise you, it will be so worth it. So thanks for taking the time to watch and experience this adventure with me. I just hope I've done this story justice on STV, because it truly has been one of my most memorable snowmobiling experiences ever. Now, an adventure like this definitely isn't for everyone, but if you're looking for a new snowmobile adventure, one that's unique and different and very much bucket listy, and one that you're going to remember for the rest of your life, well, this was it.